Last week, while scrolling through awards collections for inspiration, I discovered this incredible micro interaction that right away caught my attention. This was from a website that actually won site of the day back in August last year. And let me tell you, when you explore the full site, you will see it's packed with impressive animations throughout. What really stood out to me in that awards showcase was this brilliant hover effect they used for their team section. Watch this, as you hover over any profile image, it smoothly scales up while simultaneously revealing the corresponding name with a cool staggered text animation. Move your cursor away and everything elegantly transitions back to the default state. I thought this would be an interesting challenge to recreate, so I tried to build this exact same effect including both animations, the images doc and the text reveal, all using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP and GSAP's split text plugin. For those interested, I've also created a Next.js version that's available exclusively for Pro members. Since GSAP plugins are now free, it's amazing how easy the process has become to create such micro animations. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to create this interactive element from scratch, step by step. Please make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you'd like to access the source code for this project and hundreds of other micro projects along with a complete website template every month, you can check out the Pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. For this project, we need just one section with the class team. I'll split this into two main containers, profile images for our images doc and profile names to display the text. Inside profile images, I'll create 9 divs with the class image, each containing an image element. These form our row of profile pictures at the top. For the name section, I'll add 10 divs with the class name. Notice we have one extra div here that will display our default text when no image is hovered. We'll use h1 elements to render the names. Make sure to add an extra class name called default to the first one as it will be positioned differently. The default text slides in from above while all other names animate up from below when their corresponding image is hovered. That covers our HTML structure. Now let's move on to the CSS. First, you can see I've imported the Barlow condensed font from Google Fonts which we'll use for our large text display. Next, I'll set up our basic reset with margin and padding set to 0 and box sizing to border box for all elements. For images, I'll make them fully responsive with width and height at 100% and object fit cover to maintain aspect ratio. Now for our team section, I'll make it full viewport width and height. I'll set a dark background color, white text and use flexbox to center everything with a column direction. I'll also add some gap between both the containers. For the profile images container, I'll use display flex with max content width so it only takes up the space it needs. Each image div will be 70 by 70 pixels with 5 pixels of padding and a pointer cursor. The images themselves will have a subtle border radius for rounded corners. Now for the profile names container, this is where it gets interesting. I'll set a fixed height for this wrapper and use clip path to create a rectangular clipping area. This ensures our text animations only appear within bounds. For the H1 elements, I'll position them absolutely, make them full width, centered align, and use our custom font at a massive font size, same as the container site. I'll set them to uppercase with tight letter spacing and a red color. Initially, they are positioned off screen with translate 500%. The default text gets special treatment. It's colored differently and positioned above the container with translate Y minus 100%. Each letter within the H1 will be positioned relatively, ready for our staggered animation. Finally, I'll add a media query for screens under 900 pixels. On mobile, I'll reverse the flex direction, wrap the images into rows, reduce sizes, and adjust the font size for better mobile experience.
That's our complete CSS setup, creating the foundation for our interactive animation. Now let's dive into the JavaScript where all the magic happens. First, I'll import GSAP and the split text plugin. Then register the plugin with GSAP so we can use it. Next, we'll wrap everything in a DOM content loaded event listener to ensure our HTML is fully loaded before we start manipulating it. Now let's start by selecting all the elements we need, the profile images container, all the individual image divs, all the name elements, all the H1 headings inside the names. Next, I'll split our text into individual characters for animation. I'll loop through each name heading and use split text to break it into characters. This allows us to create that staggered animation where each letter moves independently. After splitting, I'll add a letter class to each character. This helps us target these elements for animation. Now for the initial state, I'll select the letters in our default text and set their Y position to 100%. This might seem odd since our CSS positions the default H1 at minus 100%. But we are positioning the letters within their already elevated parent. This setup allows the letters to slide down into view when animated. Now before adding any mouse events, I'll check if the screen width is 900 pixels or greater. This ensures our hover animations only work on desktop devices, preventing unwanted behavior on touch screens whether hover doesn't make sense. Now I'll loop through each profile image to set up their individual hover interactions. For each image, I need to find its corresponding name element. This is where our HTML structure becomes important. Since our default text is at index 0, I'll use index plus 1 to match each image with the correct name. So image 0 corresponds to name 1, image 1 to name 2 and so on. I'll then select all the letter elements within the specific name div which will animate when this particular image is hovered. On mouse center, I'll trigger two animations simultaneously. First, the image itself scales up from 70 pixels to 140 pixels, exactly double its original size. The scaling happens over 0.5 seconds with a power 4 out easing, creating a smooth expansion effect. Second, the corresponding name letters animate upward with translate Y minus 100%. This moves them from their hidden position below the container into the visible area. The letter animation is slightly longer at 0.75 seconds and includes a signature stagger effect. Each letter moves with a 0.025 second delay starting from center and rippling outward. On mouse leave, everything reverses. The image smoothly shrinks back to its original size 70 pixels. The letters slide back down to their starting position at Y0% disappearing from view. Both animations maintain the same timing and easing for consistency, creating a polished interaction. Finally, I'll add hover interactions for the entire profile images container. This handles the animation of our default text, the squad. When the mouse enters anywhere in the container, I'll animate the default letters from their hidden position at Y100% to 0%. This brings them down into view with the same staggered animation we used for the names. When the mouse leaves the container completely, the default letters animate back to Y100% sliding out of view again. These container level animations ensure that whenever you are hovering over the image grid area, you see the default text but it gracefully exits when you move away from the entire section. The timing and easing match our other animations. 0.75 seconds with power 4 out easing and a 0.025 seconds stagger from the center. This consistency is key to making the entire interaction feel cohesive and polished. And that completes our JavaScript. We have created a fully interactive team section where images scale on hover, names animate with beautiful staggered effects and the default text responds to the container interactions. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.